everyone. Uh, today we have with us Professor Toshoyuki Kono. He is a Japanese lawyer and a professor of law at the Kyushu University in Japan. He is internationally known for his academic research on private international law, international civil litigation, and heritage law. He also served as a member of the experts group to draft the Convention for Safeguarding Intangible Cultural Heritage and the Convention for the Protection and Promotion of the Diversity of Cultural Expression. He currently serves as a member of the Inter Intergovernmental Committee of the Intangible Heritage Convention to draft his operational directives. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Professor Kono. I give you the floor. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Hello, everybody. My name is Toshiyuki Kono. I, I teach at Kyushu University. But today, I will speak about the legal framework for the protection of intangible cultural heritage in Japan. Before World War II, Intangible cultural heritage did not fall within the scope of the laws in the field of the preservation of cultural property. Japanese legal system to protect cultural property or cultural heritage goes back to the end of 19th century. However, regarding the protection of intangible cultural heritage, we have to wait until 1950. Well, the, due to the drastic changes in the social structure and lifestyles after World War II, especially due to strong Americanization, the Committee for Education and Culture of the Upper House of the Japanese Diet strongly felt that living traditions would be lost if protective measures were not taken. Therefore, in the law for the protection of cultural properties enacted 1950, for the first time in the world, the concept of intangible cultural property was introduced. There are two categories in this concept. One is traditional performing arts. I show two slides in my presentation. And one is on your left hand side is a picture of a Kumi Odori from Okinawa region in the very south part of Japan. The picture on the right hand side is about Bunraku Puppet Theater, which was um, developed in the 18th century and still performing. Well, what kind of um, performing arts can be protected in this in this framework. Um, let me cite uh, the criteria according to which items as performing art such as music, dance, theater, and others which have especially high artistic value or especially important status in the history of performing arts or high artistic value or important status in the history of performing the art and distinctive character of a region or of a school, or especially excellent skills as important components in the existing or composition of the above three. As you see, the high value or especially high value is required to apply the protection measure. The same applies to intangible cultural property as crafts. This is the second category. The criteria is, are items as craft, such as a ceramic and porcelain, textile and dyeing, lacquerware, metalwork, and others, which have especially high artistic value or especially important status in the history of craft or high artistic value or important status in the history of craft and distinctive character of a region. Here as well, you see high artistic value is required to apply this protection measure. 
sense different from the 2003 UNESCO Convention for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage. There is a valuation system in the Japanese law. There is a, that, uh, the hierarchy uh, based on the valuation system, in other words. So the, how legally um, the intangible cultural heritage is protected. Um, the a scheme, the following scheme is applied. One is designation. Another is certification as holders. Let me explain a little bit more. So designation of in, tan, important intangible culture property. So the important intangible culture property, such as, um, as, I men, as I mentioned in my previous slides, the kumi odori the, is a dance and a theater uh, form. And the Bunraku Puppet Theater, this is another um, uh, the theater form. And Bunraku as, as, it, as it is, or the Kumi Odori as, um, as it is, is designated, or Kabuki Theater as an art form is designated. But in this theater um, uh, pieces, the, um, the natural persons, perform and these natural persons are certified as holders of important intangible culture property. So the, the very top performers are certified as the holders and that they are called, um, this is not a legal term, but they are called as living national treasure. And according to the current uh, regulation, the maximum 116 persons can be certified. And currently, uh, the, only the 110 persons are certified. And those performers certified as the holders of important intangible culture property, they will receive um, pensions in a, in a sense. Um, it is not, uh, from, from current standards, it's not much money, as, uh, frankly speaking, this is about 2 million yen. It's about less than 20,000 uh, US dollars. Uh, but uh, the being certified as a holder is a, a very big honor, very big honor. And uh, so there are um, a many, a, let's say, uh, uh, benefits uh, uh, from, 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 from other sides uh, of the business. So the, the amount of subsidies is not that generous, but there are um, a, a advantageous uh, side effects. And this has been uh, practiced um, a, since 1950s. And then who could be certified as holders? Um, in, in the domain of performing arts, individuals who on a high level embody and represent a performing art or techniques of performing art designated as important intangible culture property or, and um, more, there are two types, individuals or groups Individuals, regarding individuals who accurately realize a performing art or techniques of performing art designated as important intangible cultural property and are acquainted with them, or the member of a group where two or more persons as a unit on a high level embody and represent a performing art or techniques of performing art designated as important intangible cultural property should be certified. So think about the theater, traditional theater. You need um, a wonderful actor, for instance, but one actor alone cannot perform theater pieces. You need uh, co-actors or co-actress. Um, hence, uh, the, the top performers can be certified as individual 
holder, but at the same time, ensemble members can be certified as a unit, as a holder, group, group holder, I would say. The same applies to uh, the craft. Individuals, there are individuals or groups. And uh, uh, the both are required to have a very high level skills and techniques. And um, individuals, in the case of individuals, again, um, who correctly realize skills, techniques of craft designated as important intangible cultural heritage, important cultural property, and are acquainted with them, or the member of group, where two or more persons are the unit, on a high level, realize skills and techniques of craft designated as important intangible cultural property. And so the, the also in a, in, a, in, a, in a craft, a very high end, let's say, craftsmen can be certified as individuals, but if he or she has an atelier and this atelier is indispensable for instance, the, if the, the work is divided in, in different skills and you need very highly skilled um, uh, the, the craftsman in each, 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 each technique, uh, then, then you need to have um, an atelier as a group uh, uh, holder. Uh, so there are also in the, in the case of craft, you have an individual holders and um, the group holders. After this system was introduced um, in 1975, there were uh, big amendments in, in terms of intangible cultural heritage. There are two new um, categories were introduced. One is intangible folk cultural property. The important intangible cultural property that I just explained both performing arts and crafts um, are um, professional works, professional performers and professional craftsmen. Besides that, there are many traditional activities by, uh, let's say, uh, regular um, residents or, or communities in different parts of Japan. And in order to protect, well, let's say in in, in 70s, and especially in, in from 60s and 70s, the the the, the Japanese economy um, has been um, extremely strongly developing, and the lifestyle has been drastically changed. So um, unless a, a protective measures were in were Unless protective measures are introduced, the um, the all these traditional activities may be lost very quickly. Hence, that uh, in 1975, a new category was introduced. This is intangible folk culture property. And in the slides, uh, I, I I put two pictures. One is a Yamagasa Gion uh, Hakata Gion Yamagasa Festival in Fukuoka Prefecture. Another one is a Gion festival in Kyoto. And both uh, take place in July, in the mid-July. And uh, the, these are the festivals uh, in, from a Shinto shrine. Uh, well, how um, there are several uh, the categories um, under the in, intangible folk cultural property. Um, uh, let me put, um, just a, represent the eight, a example is i.e. social manners and customs. Uh, it is defined as as follows, items that typically show characteristics of the basic life culture of Japanese nationals from its origin, content, etc. Or items that show the basis of performing arts carried out in annual events, rituals, religious ceremonies, etc. Um, well, the, the festivals that I mentioned um, um, uh, for instance, an example from the second uh, uh, the definition. So uh, traditionally, the, the, the residents or farmers 
celebrated um, um, certain, let's say, uh, rituals by operating these uh, events or festivals, and this has been this has been continued. Well, these um, um, traditional activities um, now face uh, um, serious uh, problems. Um, uh, uh, first, Japan is a very aging society, so um, uh, we have less and less children. Uh, the how to sustain these traditional um, events or activities um, the carried out by local communities. This is a big, big issue. And uh, especially now, uh, the, we have to carefully observe the impact of COVID-19. The for uh, two years, uh, for two years, these festivals were not held at all. And um, this year in 2022, gradually they restarted. Um, but you know, the, the, the how to dance, how to perform music instruments, um, etc., et um, has have been these techniques have been taught by elder members of the community to small children. And but elder people were very concerned about the COVID-19, so that they refrained from having contact with the other younger people. So or, or if and how these traditions were transmitted or taught um, this year um, after a uh, two full year absence, uh, this needs to be carefully monitored. I hope that this the impact was not that great, but we have to see. Another um, in, uh, important concept introduced in 1975 is traditional preservation techniques. Uh, I show two uh, pictures um, in my slides. One is traditional conservation techniques for wood, wood, wooden building for the buildings, I would say. Um, the, the Japanese traditional buildings were built with wood. And uh, the if you care uh, the wood, um, the wooden building would last uh, hundreds of years. The oldest wooden temple, wooden building in, in the world uh, is now located in Japan and it was built in the seventh century. The important thing is that the, the different from stone, the wood needs to be repaired in the sense that uh, it, uh, the uh, parts which are weakened needs to be replaced with new wood. And but this, if and um, as long as this sort of replacement, minimum replacement, I would say, the minimum replacement takes place, then the wooden building lasts centuries. And how to identify the, uh, the ish problems of the wood and how to replace or how to uh, reinforce with, with the new, 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 new wood, you need to have highly developed skills and know-hows. And this um, know-how and techniques, skills are preserved by this law. And another um, important aspect uh, of this uh, new concept is repair techniques. A Japanese traditional art is, is made with very say, fragile materials. Uh, well, well the, the Buddha statues is are made, often made with wood, wood, wood. But uh, um, uh, papers and the textiles are a very important part of Japanese traditional art. So in order to keep such, especially you know, the, um, the, the paper and, uh, and the textiles are very, very fragile. So you can't expose them to uh, um, sunlight, for, for instance. So um, 
in order to keep a very old um, Buddha, Buddha statute, for instance, Buddha images or the, the paintings, um, you need to repair very, very carefully. And, and this very uh, careful uh, uh, repair techniques must be also sustained for the future uh, preservation works. So these uh, traditional preservation techniques are protected um, in, in, in Japanese law. And these uh, two uh, preservation techniques um, are now um, inscribed on the representative of representative list of 2003 convention. And the last big amendment was made in 2018. Um, the, so far, the, um, the important cultural properties, well, the, the system that to protect it is designation. And uh, as I said, the designation, you designate certain art form and then you identify and certify the holders of the techniques and skills, natural persons. Um, it, so designation is, is very sort of, um, let's say, uh, 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 well, they, they, of course, they need, they need a very a thorough um, scientific uh, research works before the designation designation is made. Um, besides that, the in 2018 um, uh, system called a registration system is is introduced, and the registration um, would not require such uh, um, high level scientific um, the research works. Um, the, the idea is to register um, many, let's say, traditional activities which were not yet, which are not yet protected by law. So to, to expand the scope of the protection, they in, introduce so-called so uh, um, the, uh, the ex expanded, they expanded the scope of the protection um, by registration system. And um, the, the two uh, uh, categories, uh, again, uh, can be registered. One is intangible cultural property. Another one is intangible for cultural property. The difference between the, the items that I explained previously were importance. Uh, there's a, the, a requirement important cultural property or important intangible for cultural property. Over here, the important is not used. So um, the, in, in this sense that the hurdle is, is lower. Um, and in, this, in my slide, I put two pictures. One is calligraphy. Calligraphy is a traditional, of course, it, was, it, was, it came from China. Uh, it was in, introduced in China, uh, the, the early uh, Japanese history. Uh, but it has been developed in its own way. And it has been practiced by um, a, uh, millions of people, and we learn it also in school. So this uh, uh, sort of activity uh, with a traditional root, traditional, uh, let's say, uh, long-term traditional activities, actually, um, needs to be protected. Um, so it was put in this registration system. Another picture that I showed in um, my slide is uh, soy, sauce, uh, soy sauce making. Uh, this is a specific type of soy sauce making. The many sauces, sauces you find in the supermarket are mass production, mass production using different um, uh, uh, ingredients and uh, with the, with the, with, the, with the big tank and etc. Cetera, et cetera. But in in a particular uh, soy sauce making, um, you have to have a certain you have to apply certain um, techniques and you use a specific type of ingredients. And this sort of traditional um, soy sauce making was chosen for the registration system. And the last but not least, the um, another big amendment made in 2018 was deregulation and decentralization. 
The background of this amendment is as follows. In Article 1 of the law for the protection of cultural property in Japan clearly stipulates that the cultural property needs to be preserved and utilized in an appropriate manner. So not only put in a storage, or, um, uh, but also it needs to be used, either exhibited or, um, yeah, is, um, at least it, it will be shown to, to the nation, Japanese nationals. Um, in this context, the, uh, the government thought that the, 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 the practice uh, until recently uh, has been too much focused um, on the, the preservation aspect. It was not properly um, utilized. Um, so the, the utilization uh, needs to be more or, or, or better uh, implemented. In this context, the, um, in order to use uh, cultural property uh, in an appropriate manner, uh, Traditionally, you, you need to obtain a permission in advance. And this permission takes a, a lot of procedures. Um, and, um, and it was controlled by the central government, wherever uh, the cultural property is, is located. Um, this sort of very centralized uh, and heavily regulated manner would not be appropriate for the utilization. Hence, uh, the, they decided to decentralize. So the prefecture, municipality, and the, um, uh, the, the holder of, of the holder of, of, of in, in, in touch, uh, the cultural property should take the responsibility should take the responsibility um, so that the control by the central government would be would be a bit re reduced and at the same time so the deregulation the regulation of the central government needs to be relaxed and it should be take it should be um let's say protected protection um, the measure should be rather on the shoulder of of the the, the local uh, the government's uh, shoulder um so or the um, the, the new scheme was introduced, i.e. on a prefectural level, um, the general plan for preservation and utilization needs to be elaborated. And based on this general plan, the municipality where the cultural property is located needs to develop a regional plan for preservation and utilization. And then um, the holder of cultural property needs to make a plan for the preservation and utilization. In, in terms of uh, intangible cultural property and intangible folk cultural property, um, the, uh, um, the, 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 for the plan, but let's say uh, the, this plan, how to preserve it and how to use it uh, needs to be uh, also elaborated. Um, uh, for instance, if uh, um, a local community it holds um, uh, uh, a traditional, uh, let's say, uh, performing art, then um, they make a they should make a plan how to preserve it. I mean, how to how to continue it, uh, but at the same time, how to use it. In other, for instance, how where and how they show their um, the performance and how to how to continue their tradition. So uh, then, uh, the uh, this can be uh, the uh, uh, integrated in um, the preservation system um, in on, in in the municipality and in the prefecture, and they may get uh, some um, support as well. So uh, we have to see how this system works. Uh, this system was introduced just. Um, four years ago, it is being still um, developed, but uh, uh, we hope that the, the system works well, and uh, um, so we would have more opportunities to see um, different kinds of intangible cultural properties in, in all parts of Japan. So this said that I uh, finish my 
uh, presentation here. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. And please uh, uh, be interested in intangible cultural heritage in all parts of the world. Thank you.